Okay. What do you have? Okay, here's a, you know what, Suka, I believe you uh, you just bought something up related to this. Uh, oh, so, so, you know what? We, we have a call? Yeah, we're going to go to the call. Okay. Uh, we have Beth. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we have Natalie, who I like to call Beth sometimes, just because I'm like that. That, so was, we, lame. that was a lame comeback, <laughs> just so you know. I, I'm watching you here. But go on. <laughs> Natalie? Yeah, yeah, Natalie's the new Beth. Uh, so Natalie is on the line, and uh, she has a question. You go, Natalie. Hello, Dr. Tyson. Um, I actually had a question about some recent advances in what seems to be virus, let's say, technology, in that it seems a lot of the viruses we encounter now actually originated in other species. And so I was wondering, is this level of species crossing common to viruses, or is there anything that we're doing as humans to encourage the formation of these multi-species viruses? Awesome question. Oh, thanks, Natalie. So obviously that's going to have to go to Laurie Garrett, our like, infectious disease expert at the table. Laurie, what, what do you have to say about that? Well, very smart question, and both of her posit answers are correct. So we have this process we call zoonosis, and that's the transmission of viruses, or bacteria for that matter, that are typically in one set of species of animals, and then boom, they jump to another. So zoonosis has two O's. Which right, is, like which is short for zoo. zoo. Mm -hmm. Right. And zodiac comes from that as well. Ah. Zoo, Twelve animals. Yeah. Go on. Oh, but they oh. spell it wrong. <laughs> so it should be zodiac. <laughs> well, at any rate, uh, zoonosis actually is a very dangerous process because typically, when a microbe jumps for the first time to a species that has not seen it before, that species has no uh, immunity particular to it. immunity to it, mm -hmm. and the virus is very virulent, typically, in that first leap. And so, for example, I was in the Ebola epidemic in 1995. And you scare the hell out of me. Yes. And, <laughs> and that was a virus that had just jumped from bats through chimpanzees to humans. To humans. Huh. And so it came in, in its initial wave, it was more than 90% lethal. And after it passed through humans for a while, it dumbed down, if you will. It became less and less. Now, is that lethal. dumbing down a result of uh, our defenses or the virus itself and its replication? The virus, if you. But why would a virus ever dumb down? Yeah. It is, it, well, I don't want to say this in a way that sounds like I'm anthropomorphizing and putting a brain into a virus. We love it. No, we, we like that. We like that stuff time. here. I anthropomorphize <laughs> the whole freaking universe. So, you can do it for a virus. Go. But, but. The virus is, it's in the virus's interest to remain in your species and so that you walk around and spread it. Whereas if it gets you so sick that you're immediately flattened out and therefore not particularly likely to infect others, go back to your zombie model. Mm -hmm. You want the zombies walking around trying to touch the humans and turning them into zombies. Right. You right. don't want a you... zombie to immediately drop on the floor and not move. Okay, so it can't be perfectly lethal, it has to only be mildly lethal so you have a chance to spread it. So why doesn't it maximize that sort of let me not kill you immediately factor? For like I would say maybe 60 years. <laughs> exactly. So that would be HIV. Ah! It is a brilliantly adapted virus to the homo sapiens Cause, species. Because it doesn't kill you immediately. It takes 10, ten years ten, yeah. or more if you're untreated. And during that time, for most of that time, you're contagious to your sexual partners, to your... Who don't know. Or who don't know. Right. And much of that time, you have no symptoms. So you're unaware that you have a dangerous disease that so you you're can the, give So you're the others. perfect viral carrier. It's a perfect viral situation. Mm -hmm. But, but so, to go back to Natalie's question, mm -hmm. there, are, there are two key points here. One is, um, we are stressing our planet in so many ways that millions of species of creatures that carry viruses and bacteria inside of them are being forced close to human habitation. Displaced. They're displaced. They're displaced. Mm -hmm. Bats are at the top of the list, and bats turn out to be the natural carriers of the MERS virus, the SARS virus, Ebola, Marburg, Lyssa, Nipah. We can go down a huge list. Uh, Why don't they all die from these diseases? Because apparently... Well, maybe they, they do, and we don't notice it. Them. Oh, they're immune. They oh. seem not to die. They seem oh. to be carriers. They may get sick, but they don't get lethally sick. Okay. And they pass it in when they chew on fruit, and they spit out the pits and so on. The viruses are, co are encased in that mm -hmm. spittle, if you will. And then our domestic animals, pigs or horses or what have you, 
and say, whoa, there's some nice cheap food. Right. And they go chomping up and they get... Were you just it. imitating the sound of it? <laughs> <laughs> Which, I'm just, Which just, by the way, it was pretty good. It was actually good. Yeah, it was a sloppy, a sloppy pig there, but go on. So she's right that human activities are putting us in greater risk. The other is, of course, we have a huge trade in exotic animals. There's all kinds of people who, for all sorts of, I think, dumb reasons, uh, like to collect exotic species. Mm -hmm. And there's, it's usually illegal to both collect and tra uh, smuggle. Absolutely. So all of it is sub rosa <coughs> and therefore not easily, you know, controlled by health of, uh, officials. And this is the way that, for example, we had prairie dogs dying across the Midwest at one point from a virus that had never before been seen in North America, and it was all because of smuggled animals. Oh, I what? thought it was because they were so adorable. They were dying of cuteness. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody in Texas would tell you that a prairie dog was cute. That's true. That's so, true. so Nadia, I, th we, I think we hit that one. Natalie. Natalie. Oh, so, no, what I, Natalie, what I call it, Natalie. Natalie, Natalie, I think we got that. Did we get that one for you? I think so. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. Yes. Thank the you. answer is it's our fault. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thanks for calling in. All right.